What is happiness to you? Is it a journey, a destination, or perhaps something you've been searching for without even realizing it? To let you know me better, let me introduce you to my parents. Ever since I can remember, people have told me that me and my father looked alike. And even the way we talked, the way we walked, maybe even the way we ate were similar. But I think we were born into very different circumstances and had a very different childhood. I think I was born into very fortunate circumstances. I had everything I wanted. But on the other hand, my father didn't. You may have heard those stories about how your parents had to fight 54 alligators to get on the bus to go to school every single day. And that was the case for my father. Minus the alligators, of course, that would be ridiculous. But, but to put it lightly, back then, my, fa my father wasn't the smartest student. And the reason he had to get on the bus to go to school so far every day was because he couldn't get, upset, get accepted into a school close enough to home. But then he had a comeback worthy of a movie character and decided he wanted to be smart now and got accepted into July University, graduated within three and a half years, then went overseas, got two master's degrees, and came back to Thailand and got a job as a lawyer at various different companies like Pizza Hut, Microsoft, Azenger, and various more that I couldn't name. And for a while, life was good. He had a good career, he met my beautiful mother, and most importantly, he gave birth to the most handsome, amazing, intelligent, future Nobel Prize winner, me. But not content with her genius, intelligent son, my mom also wanted a daughter, and that's how my sister was born. Cue to Disney saw happiness. My life was like a fairy tale filled with joy, love, and I was just in the ideal family. But then everything changed at the arrival of the diagnosis. My dad was told he only had one year left to live because he had stage four cancer. And after he fought against it for 18 months, becoming weaker and weaker day by day, he passed away when I was only five years old. I, when he was still alive, I saw him getting thinner and thinner, but I just thought he was on a diet. I saw him less at home, but I just thought he was busy at work. I didn't even understand he would be gone permanently. My mom explained to me that my dad was like a broken toy who just had to be fixed elsewhere, not where I can be with him ever. I only started to understand he would actually be gone permanently when I was seven years old. And at that time, every mention of him would make me cry. Since he passed away when I was so little, almost everything I knew about him was learned through stories, his Facebook, maybe his work ID card. And if I did remember them myself, it was very blurry, like a distant dream. And of course, all the things I knew about him were super positive. It was all about a clever, devoted fighter who would never give up, perfect like in the movies, which made him my idol. I always dreamt of being a lawyer, even though I never knew what a lawyer was. And I felt like I was missing something, like he was the missing piece of my happiness. On Father's Day, I would see other people make ridiculous cards depicting their father in the most ridiculous ways possible. And I wanted to do that. I was jealous of them, of course, but I didn't want to ruin their fun, so I kept in my sadness. I always felt like an unlucky person since I saw other people in my school with their entire families living together in happiness, and it felt like I was missing a limb. So uh, I grew up always locked in daydreams. I could never focus on anything. So. My mom decided to enroll me in a hip-hop therapy class. And that decision would change my life forever. At the end of every class, my teacher would get me to write every lucky thing that I think has had to, happened in my life. And on the first day, I submitted an empty page. 
I was so focused on my father's death that I couldn't realize all the lucky things that have happened in my blessed life. You may have grew up with a piggy bank to learn to start saving money early in your childhood. But on the other hand, me and my sister had learned to start saving lucky memories. And we called it a lucky book. You had a piggy bank, we had a lucky book. As the course progressed, the hip hop therapy class, I may say, progressed, I learned that happy moments could be simple. I could get to play a game before bed. I could get to eat good food. Or simply being alive was lucky. Another fact that I want to mention is I grew up never getting to watch Disney movies. Why? Because my mom thought it was too unrealistic, and I do agree with her. All the characters are good looking, talented. They always end up with the most ideal family possible at the end of the story. But in reality, not all lives end with a happy ending. There's no magical genie in a lamp. There's no fairy godmother. There's no talking rat in my hat controlling my every move. So instead, I grew up watching superhero movies, which is kind of ironic since I just said Disney movies were unrealistic, but I digress. Batman, Superman, Spider-Man. I felt that I could relate to them because all their parents are dead. They don't need to be perfect to be special. And I felt that I could be a superhero someday, somehow. Because, and I started joining robotics competition at a young age. And in those competitions, it felt like my secret superhero training. And when I won, it felt like I defeated the bad guys and saved the day, which helped me forget my father's death, if only for a little while, and it wiped away my sadness. But as Spider-Man once said, with great power comes great responsibility. And to be a stupid hero, you don't need to be perfect, but you still have to work very hard, and that's an exhausting path I'm not willing to take. And that was my origin story. Now let's see some character development. And let me show you what I learned. I learned that life's like a seesaw with lots of ups and downs. I was born on the happy side, you know, full of fun games and just the good stuff of being a kid. But one day my father left and it sent me to the unhappy side it felt like a roller coaster drop sending me to another dimension that I never knew before. Life felt different. It felt gloomy, not the same as I was used to. Then I started joining robot competition, which helped me go fly high again. And it helped me become happy again. But it was not long until I started losing and it rocketed me back to the sad side. But as I matured, I learned that that wasn't the best way. I had to find that middle ground, a place where I could go back to when something bad happens and stabilize whatever comes my way. And that became my mission. I learned that happiness isn't always about chasing after the good stuff or hiding away from the sad stuff. It's about finding that middle ground and just a chill spot in the middle. It was a smooth groove, a happy dance routine, happy and sad moments. If I lost in a competition now, I can always realize that I can always come back and try again later. But if I won, I also have to realize someone will, with the same mindset will eventually come beat me too. Now, I'd like to end off my talk with a message to my father. Growing up, I always thought you were the missing piece of my happiness. But however, as I grew up a little, I realized that you weren't. Your story will always be a part of me and I will always love you, but I'm not going to copy your style. I'm going to do my own thing. And I might fall down many times. I might not be successful. I might not be rich. But I promise I'll always end up in a story 
where you can be pl proud of. So you can sit back in your comfy chair and enjoy my story unfold. And for the people listening to, for, to me today, thank you for coming to my TED Talk.